Hello and welcome my people that only flip pancakes with their hands. How you doing today? It's Super John Bombo here and I've got a very interesting video idea for you guys. I think there's a big question about what is the best fifth tier tower in the game. And what kind of makes us so interested in that is because it is one of the most powerful towers in the game. You're really pushing the game to its limit. But I think a question that we should probably ask is what's the best low tier tower in the game? What's the best tower to kind of start off the game with? What should we be using? Or if we just did like a random first tier tower challenge, we'd probably want to know what to use in that scenario. So today we're going to go over my top five best first tier towers in the game. So take a quick gander at all of these towers. This is all the towers in the game that we can build. Think about which ones you probably would start off your game with. Which ones would you actually use in a normal situation and think that they're good? Keep that in mind for your own list. Let me know in the comments below what your top five are while we start going over my top five. So I don't have any special rules for this challenge other, other than they have to be only first tier upgrades. They can be any sort of combinations of these first tier upgrades or only one of them. And they have to be efficient. And what I say by efficient is, of course, a single dart monkey that costs $200 or a single boomerang that costs $275 is not going to be as good as a super monkey that costs $2,500. The question is, isn't how much better is the super monkey? It's how much more efficient is the boomerang than the super monkey for his price and or his position in the map. So to start off today, we're going to talk about the... Druid. This is coming in at number five on our list. The Druid is often underused in the, in the entire history of the game. We either only get him as a giant bundle of crazy amounts of Druids here, or we just throw him down to get him some extra uh, pop and power in some certain challenges. But I think a lot of people underestimate how good the Hard Thorns Thorn Swarm combo is. A druid by himself is only $425, not that much money. You throw in a fairly cheap hard thorns upgrade to uh, virtually double his poppy power, and then you can get even more by getting a thorn swarm. He starts shooting eight instead of five thorns. So that's eight projectiles we're throwing that can each pop two balloons per shot. That's a max of 16 balloons per shot. If you ever get a decent army of these guys going sort of early on in the game, you're basically unstoppable. For example, we can send out round 35. This is a very, very difficult round to deal with in most situations. You're going to see the amount of damage we're doing with our Hard Thorns Druid army. They just straight up dominate. These are rainbow balloons coming out. And with four baby druids here, we're just dominating these things. It's kind of insane. On top of that, don't underestimate the amount of Moab popping power they have as well. For example, if we send out a Moab class balloon right here, they have a pretty good amount of Moab popping power. We might not pop all the balloons inside, but from four measly druids this is very very efficient for what we're doing their minor downfall and the reason why they're coming in at number five in this list is because the other upgrades that you can get beyond this aren't that worthwhile they kind of have a big footprint so if you do want to put a couple of these guys down you might be taking up some good space in here if you do want to buy these druids and you do want to get those higher tier upgrades you're talking about spending a lot of money to make them worthwhile thousand two thousand six thousand dollars even all the way up to ninety thousand dollars here for our for, for fifth tier upgrade so they do have a couple downfalls to them but overall they are a very very good tower to use in blue star defense Six, and I highly recommend you get used to using these 1-1 one, one druids. Coming in at number 4 in our list is the Ice Tower. Now I know what you're thinking. Chris, you crazy son of a gun. What? What's wrong with you? You never use Ice Towers. Why would you bring them up as one of the best lower tier upgrades in the game? Oh man, well I feel a little bit weird about this because by himself... He isn't automatically that good, but he has all these weird use case scenarios that can be just straight up amazing. For example, putting him just right in the middle of this little spot right here. He's only $500 to start off with, which isn't that much, but getting a couple upgrades here. For example, larger radius gives it that large radius of, of ability to affect the balloons in here. And we can get permafrost, which I think is probably one of the most important upgrades in the game. If you're actually trying to do some weirder challenges or some weirder uh, tactics, or even just to kind of increase the amount of damage you're doing in any level, this will help you out all the way up until around like 98 and 99. That's why this upgrade's so insane. I tend to not use them. All right, I'll be honest with you guys. I tend to not use them because I personally don't like dealing with the Ice Tower. But if you use them properly, if you are a good player and you can end up using them properly, you will make them worthwhile. You will 100% make them worth their money here. 
So for example, we can send out a fairly difficult round like round 15. We're not going to pop all the balloons here. But what you're going to notice is that we're actually going to pop a decent amount of the balloons for the amount of money we, money we spent here. This is, again, a very difficult round to usually deal with. We're popping all these, we're popping a lot of these balloons, and we're allowing our other towers to do more damage in the process by slowing them down. Every single time we freeze one of these guys, we're going to slow them down for basically forever. So you notice one single yellow balloon is going to sneak through on round 15 here. That's insane for a $700 upgrade on round 15. You can go all the way up to some sort of crazier rounds. Like, I don't know, uh, 49. And you're not going to see us popping all of these balloons, but you're going to see us doing a lot of damage to the balloons that we're seeing here and allowing us to sort of get that, that, that permafrost upgrade on them so for the rest of the game they're slowed down and all of our other towers could do a better job and that's on top of the fact that we can permafrost ceramic balloons over here to make them slower and allow us to pop them even easier if you use this guy properly i promise you guys you will not regret it get used to using a nice tower in your game if you can now this is a very very good position but if you want to for later in the game you could even throw him down in a weirder spot like this and get a quick permafrost large radius uh, ice tower Keep them out of the way of all of your other towers and let your other towers do the popping power just kind of by throwing them in the middle of the map and letting them not get affected by any of this ice stuff. Definitely a possibility there. And that's why he comes at number four on our list because he does have some downfalls. He can't pop zebra balloons. He can help regen the balloons a little bit too much. And you kind of have to find a good spot for him to put, get put in. Putting him right in the middle of this map was just literally perfect for us. But in other, other maps, it might not have an excellent position like we had right here. But you can see with all these balloons here, they're just moving unbelievably slow, allowing all of our other towers to pop them. And that's what makes this guy such a fantastic tower. He's the greatest support tower and somewhat damage doer of all time. Coming in at number three on our list we've got the ninja now i knew that you know that we all know that i know that you know that the ninja was gonna end up here the ninja is just a great tower all around in every scenario there's almost nothing bad about a ninja at all but one of the best things about him is you can start off with them at a fairly cheap price of 500 dollars. you can buy some cheaper upgrades like ninja discipline to almost double his pop power you get more attack range and speed what is that that's a double upgrade right there. You can get a Seeking Shuriken so he never misses and always gets his popping power mark for a fairly cheap price. And he has Camo Detection. Overall, a very, very good tower to have in the game. Uh, his downfalls are that he does have a little bit of a weakness to grouped balloons, but his extreme advantages outweigh all of his negatives. He also doesn't have any lead popping power, but so do a lot of other towers. So what we could do is he sent out a round like, I don't know, around 31 or something like that. This is a fairly difficult round to deal with uh, in most situations. And our ninjas are actually going to do a great job against them. Even against these bigger group zebra rushes and stuff like that. We're able to take them down with, uh, uh, not with a breeze. But we're able to do a ton of damage to these guys. Look at this, man. And they've, they're not missing at all. And they've got a ton of accuracy. And we leak one balloon with these four little baby ninjas right here. Straight up crazy. Don't under underestimate their camera detection, don't underestimate their popping power, and don't underestimate the fact that you open yourself up to upgrade them to so much better stuff on top of that. You can double your popping power with sharp shurikens. You can double it again with double shot, and then you can go all the way up to five shurikens at once. And if you've got monkey knowledge activated, it's six shurikens, by the way, guys. And at this point is when you want to start alchemizing them to get one of the best towers in the game. So I know we're talking about all the other upgrades we can get over here, but that's why this ninja is so great. You leave so many options open for the future while having a great tower already. So don't underestimate the ninja. He is a great tower, and that's why he ends up at number three on our list. Coming in at number two on our list, we've got the submarine. Yeah, you can tell we're on a new map here because we need some water. For the submarine, is he really that good as a low-tier submarine? I think he's one of the most underestimated towers in the game. Nobody uses low-tier subs because they do it wrong. Everybody wants to get long-range and advanced intel, and they think that that's what makes the submarine good. They've got that infinite range, but you don't need it in a lot of scenarios. Instead, for a very, very, very good starting tower here, you can go for a cheapo submarine, who's already got two pops per shot, with the ability to already seek the balloons. You get barbed darts to pop four balloons each. We're doubling it easily. 
and you want to go for twin guns which doubles it again and with these few upgrades just like that you get one of the best popping power towers in the game um now compare this to the four ninjas that we were just playing with and don't get me wrong it's hard to compare two towers like this but with the increased attack speed with this guy going over here he's just a great popping power tower for the cheap price that we're paying for this guy not to mention the fact that we're probably going to regen the balloons a little bit we do a great job on round 31 overall just so much popping power over overall for the price that we're spending on this guy highly recommend you go for a submarine like this all right we regen farm maybe 31 was a bad round let's try out round 35 which we used for our druids here again very very difficult round we might even lose some some lives here but look at the amount of popping power we're getting out of a, a cheapo just over a thousand dollar tower uh our sell price right here is 908 dollars and you can see how much we're getting out of this guy. Uh, it's almost unbelievable what you can get out of a weird tower like this guy. I don't have much to say about him besides that he just does what you ask him to do. He does a lot of pops for a cheap amount of money. His weaknesses are obviously you need to put him on water. And his, another weakness is, is now you're locking yourself out of the ability to ever get advanced intel on this guy. Maybe a better round for $1,000 would be something like round 20, which is what we're probably going to deal with here. Maybe even 22. What we're going to realistically deal with with a submarine like this. This is like a realistic round. We'd have $1,000 to spend while we're just getting farms and stuff like that. He just dominates it by himself. Like, it's unbelievable, man. I really, really like this guy. It also opens yourself up for two other upgrades that are very, very good that people often overlooked. The ability to pop lead balloons and airburst starts, which everybody knows is just amazing, especially if you have monkey knowledge activated, which allows you to shoot out four uh, splits instead of three splits. So you're increasing your popping power drastically with just a few extra upgrades here at not that much more money. So like I said, he's got a couple weaknesses to him and the fact that you got to put him on the water and you got to kind of, you know, make sure he's in the right spot at the right time. But because you get so much popping power out of him for such a small, minuscule little price, I highly recommend the submarine as a a great tower you should use in BTD6. And coming in at number one, what do you guys think it's going to be? Come on, be honest with me. What do you think it's... Oh, you probably already know. It's the Halley Pilot. Come on, you can't get away from him. He's so good. He's so, so good. First of all and foremost, if you have that monkey knowledge to get that cheap, half-priced military monkey, you can save $750 just like that, or $675 on medium. It's insane that you can get a half-priced Halley Pilot at all, but you can for that measly baby little price right here. He's already a fantastic tower for the price. Then we can just double it to, with quad darts, and we can get it even faster firing with a faster firing speed right here. You end up with one of the best monkeys in the game uh, for the price. You can set him on different patrol points. You can set him in a lock and place position. You got to put him wherever the heck you want him to be, or even just have him follow mouse and just go wherever the heck you want him to be. Get the most pop and power if you're willing to micro with him. He does so much popping power. We can probably take down round 31 uh, almost by ourselves here without very much assistance at all, even while locking him in place. Um, now, of course, we're spending a little bit more money than some of our other towers here. Admittedly, he's, he's a pretty expensive tower here, but because you're getting all of these advantages kind of compiled up on top of each other, he ends up being straight up unbelievable. If we take him back and we put him on follow mouse here, we're actually willing to uh, sort of um, micro him a little bit. He can even take down a Moab class layer. He can't take down the Moab all by himself here, but he can get rid of the Moab layer all by himself and pop the ceramics all on top of that. Uh, he is just so good. If you don't have a strategy where you're using your monkey ace, or excuse me, your, your heli pilot here, uh, in a real game, if you have the half price monkey, you're probably doing it wrong. You definitely need to have one of these guys in almost every single game. Don't use any other military monkeys until you have your heli pilot first. That, on top of already being so good, he can also get a few other upgrades kind of beyond that that just make him that much more powerful. For example, getting that pursuit is $500 that most people think is just wasted money if you don't, if you're not really playing dollar to dollar. But if you're able to afford it, getting pursuit is a hands off approach, not having to micro anymore, of just having him do everything for you and pop crap tons of balloons. On top of the fact that if you get an alchemist in range of this guy, he becomes almost unstoppable. I know that we're talking about 1-1 one, one upgrades right now, and we're talking about late-game heli-pilot upgrades, but because you have to think about the future, 
you have to think about, I'm going to start off with the heli, let him do all the work for me for a very, very long time, and then upgrade him into a couple paths that just make him unstoppable. And that's why this guy is number one on our list. He's super duper good for what he is. For what he, is. he can pop Moabs, he can pop balloons, he does crap tons of balloon popping power on top of that. I'm just putting him on, on, on Pursuit because I don't feel like dealing with him right now. But uh, he, he's got all of these advantages all piled up into a tiny little beautiful package. He looks cool on top of it, and he's a great tower. I highly recommend you guys use that 101 heli pallet in almost every single one of your games. As far as weaknesses go, I can't really think of any. Uh, I think that's kind of the reason why... Um, I actually put him at number one on my list. He can't pop lead balloons, like, that doesn't really matter. He can't pop camo balloons, so, like, all right, that's fair enough. I guess that's kind of a weakness for us at this upgrade path. But you can easily deal with that by either getting a village for late game and getting a village alchemist combo, and he's already worth it still. That's the weirdest part about it. Getting a couple upgrades on him, getting a couple buffs on him in combination with all the other upgrades makes him just a very, very powerful tower overall. And that's why he comes at number one on our list of top five fifth, uh, first tier towers in the game. You always want to say that fifth tower, don't you? If you guys enjoyed this series, make sure you press that like button. Make sure you subscribe. And let me know in the comments below if you want me to kind of continue this series with top tier uh, top second tier or even top third tier or even top fourth tier towers that we have in the game I've already done top fifth tier But we might go and back and visit that because the game is always adapting and changing And I think that my top five might have changed at least a little bit from what I've used them before Thank you guys so much for watching and of course have a super duper delicious day